Welcome. We're going to talk about upgrading your apps to Maui. How many of you uh, have heard of Maui before? Besides the joke. Okay, good. Most of you. Um, how many of you have an app that you're thinking about actually upgrading to Maui? Okay. A good chunk. The rest of you are here to learn. Very exciting. I have a lot of information. Um, I am Maddie. I have already had my great intro, so I don't really need to introduce myself again. But here's a picture of me and my coworker, Dave. That's silly. Last time we were in Europe, when we were having a crazy time. Um, yeah, I really work on productivity for Maui. That's kind of my like bread and butter, but I go into everything else. Dave is really our SDK side of the house. And then we also have Gerald here from our team who works on the Maui team and is like a YouTube celebrity. So definitely go get your picture with him and whatever. Um, and .NET Maui, if you want the pitch, is the unified way to build mobile apps um, and desktop apps with .NET. So Android, iOS, Windows using WinUI, and Mac using Mac Catalyst. If that doesn't mean anything to you, that's totally fine. Um, it's totally native. We give you a bunch of UI controls in the box that use the native controls under the hood so it looks and feels like it belongs on the platform that you're developing for. Um, one of the things we're really proud about with Maui in particular is it's just really accessible by default. It's very easy to make your apps friendly for screen readers or um, for people who have diff different accessibility things on their phones and their devices. Um, and Maui takes advantage of all that because it's native, so it can. Um, and really what we like to say is Maui is the most productive way to develop your native apps and they perform great. Performance was a big focus for .NET 7. We're not talking about it much these days because .NET 7 got really fast. And .NET 8, it's just better, but not so much better than .NET 7 was that we feel like it's uh, the big party anymore. Um, and it all runs from a single code base on all the devices you can target. So this is our old template app. I believe it was our first template app when we shipped Maui. And now it keeps changing, which is exciting. So Maui's part of .NET. Um, it is. One big happy family. We will not talk about Blazor Hybrid today. Any Blazor developers? Any web general developers, JavaScript? <laughs> yeah, that's my girl. <laughs> the one, she's holding down the fort. Um, you can actually take your Blazor and stick it in your Maui app because they're all built with .NET. They're all the same. So you can take your Blazor, put it in Maui, and then you have a Maui app running with Blazor UI natively on your desktop. Very cool. Different topic for a different time. Um, but because Maui is part of .NET, the .NET, Android, and iOS, and Mac runtimes are part of .NET, you can mix and match whatever you need to target all of these different things. Oh, yeah. So Maui is an evolution of Xamarin. So Xamarin developers again, show of hands. Yeah, cool. Um, with Xamarin, there was a separate runtime that was .NET, but it wasn't .NET, it was Mono. And we took Mono and we put it into .NET. We took all the things that Mono was really good at, and we put them in .NET, and we made .NET better. And they're all kind of one big chunk now. Um, the Xamarin native projects, so there were people who wrote purely Xamarin apps for Android, Xamarin apps for iOS. Those became like the modern .NET style projects. We call them SDK style. Um, and they became like .NET for Android, .NET for iOS. And then what we're going to spend most of our time talking about today is Xamarin Forms turning into Maui itself. So Maui is really just the framework to target all of these different .NET platforms. Xamarin Android and Xamarin iOS were ways to build those with Mono for those platforms. Now you can just use .NET. Maui lets you target all of them. We changed some cool things. We also folded in the device helper library, which was called Xamarin Essentials, into Maui itself so you don't have to add stuff to figure out like the battery life or open the text messages or whatever you want of the device. So <laughs> before we get into this, I have been on probably at least one, if not two calls a week for two or three years. When did we announce Maui? 2020? Um, explaining these things to people, <laughs> to our customers. So they call up their Azure support rep or whoever they know at Microsoft and they're like, I need to talk to the Maui team right now. And these are the things I keep having to explain. So before we get into any of the other fun of this presentation, the actual tips and tricks here, these are the FAQs. Is Xamarin dead? <laughs> so no, Xamarin is actually now properly part of .NET. We took away the separate name because it made no sense to have two names for something that was all part of .NET, right? 
Um, and now .NET has .NET, .NET Maui has .NET branding, blah, blah, blah. If you were a big fan of Xamarin and the monkeys and stuff, we try to keep those around as Easter eggs, but um, we wanted to consolidate all of that effort to grow .NET as much as possible and not try and fraction people off. So it's not dead, but it's just part of it. Just, it grew up a little bit. Do I need to completely rewrite my Xamarin apps? No, you do not. Don't freak out. We're going to help you. Most of this talk is about what you're going to do that's not rewriting your app. There are things you have to change, but it's not like you have to destroy every page and rewrite them. You don't have to rewrite any of your business logic. It's going to be OK. Don't freak out. This question has become a lot less frequent in the past like six months. But the first like year, everyone was like, I have to rewrite my app? I have to rewrite my app? And we were like, oh, no. We did not message that well. Xamarin Android and Xamarin iOS, like I said, I get this question all the time, no matter how many times I say it. They are just .NET for iOS and .NET for Android. If you have Xamarin Android projects, they will work with .NET. The migration is actually very easy. Do you have to migrate? <laughs> um, technically, no. I can't make you do anything. However, that is a bad answer. Um, the reason that we are doing MAUI and that the Xamarin end of life is coming in May 2024 is because the App Store in particular, and Apple, is very strict about what versions of things you need to build their tools with and their apps with. So they are going to shut off Xcode support for updating apps at a certain point. Probably, we, we guesstimate it's usually May. Um, we are considering giving you one more version of Xcode and Xamarin, but we haven't made that decision yet. So if you don't plan on pushing any updates to the App Store, and Google does this eventually too, Apple's just the one who's mean about it, um, and you don't mind not being on a supported platform that is getting security fixes, you don't have to migrate. That's fine by me. However, you probably should. Um, is .NET MAUI production ready? What do you say, Dave? <laughs> that was not very confidence inspiring. So this is his answer. My answer is, duh, people are shipping with it. It's in production. Dave's answer is, if your app was started like eight years ago by a bunch of vendors that you haven't talked to, and it's a pile of flaming garbage, and you like have no idea where anything is in the code, it's probably not production ready for you, because you're going to have to do a lot of work to migrate, and it's going to be a huge pain. Um, but generally, .NET 7, tons of MAUI apps out there. MAUI started shipping GA halfway through .NET 6, so .NET 7 was the first like real release people synced up to. Um, if you're just getting started, wait the month for .NET 8, because .NET 8 is awesome. Anecdotally, I've heard from people that .NET 8 is like so light years beyond in terms of functionality. So that's shipping at .NET Conf, which we've seen the sizzle reel for on November 14th. Dave and I will be there. Gerald will be there hosting. Very exciting. And there's um, tons of talks and all the .NET stuff. So it's always a fun time. Um, this is my favorite. Why? <laughs> I have had actually customers be like, this is ridiculous. You hate us. And I'm like, no, no, we don't. Um, the reason we're breaking some things is because sometimes you have to break something to make it more beautiful in the end or whatever. What's the phrase? Just some turn of words there. Um, but really, the things that we broke in Xamarin to make MAUI were very intentional to make MAUI very forward focused, more part of .NET, um, you know, extensible, flexible, so you don't have to use the same app models as you roll, um, and, and just generally better for us to maintain as a team. So good things. Um, another question I started to get more recently, Uno and Avalonia, what are they? Are they competitors? Do you guys hate them? Oh my god, I, should, I can't talk to you about Uno. No, we love Uno. They use .NET. They're .NET platforms, right? So they just use a different kind of syntax different style of XAML. It's more familiar to maybe UWP developers, um, WPF developers. They have different features. For us, like we are the first party .NET cross-platform framework. So in a way, we are competing with these people. But they use .NET. They use .NET for Android and .NET for iOS. A lot of them have good interoperability with MAUI. So you can mix and match to whatever your need is. Don't worry. I'm not going to be mad at you. I think they're great. So we did a lot. When we broke some things, then we made some things better. Um, another question we get all the time is obviously like, why should I migrate? What is the value for me? And the real under the hood stuff is where the magic happened, I think. 
Um, we did a lot ourselves for the maintainability of the platform. It was really hard when something broke to go and fix it in all the places in Xamarin Forms, and now it's much easier with Maui. Um, of course, unifying things with .NET across the board, making the tooling better, more performant, and faster, making Maui itself faster, and then desktop became a real focus for us. Desktop was always like a second thought with Xamarin and Xamarin Forms. We had UWP support, but most people never actually shipped with it because it wasn't great. We wanted to bring desktop into like the, the actual family here and um, put a lot of effort in that. So these are just some of the examples. There's definitely more. Um, my favorite ones on here, I think, are the actual like clicks. You can do like an easy secondary click with your mouse now which took us way too long to implement, but that's OK. And uh, the handler pattern, you'll see a lot of videos on. If you care about writing like custom code for each platform, that's something to be interested in. Um, and then, of course, because it's not part of .NET, you get like command line support. You can do .NET build with your Maui app, which is awesome. Way easier than how we had to do it before. So, Of course, there's also new features. I think the most popular part about Maui is the ability to share all of your assets in one place. So you can do images, fonts, um, the icons, the splash screens, a whole bunch of stuff, just raw assets in one folder. If you've ever done Android development, you know that to put a single picture in an Android app, you need like nine copies of it, and it needs to go in nine different folders, all labeled the correct thing for the Android compiler to understand. It is ugh. With a Maui, you just drop an SVG or like a PNG in there, and it does it for you. So much nicer. Um, borders, which I asked about forever. <laughs> so I had to put it on the slide. It's a minor thing. Um, drawing your own UI with Maui graphics, and of course, Skia Sharp, if that's something you're interested in. Um, support for light and dark mode, and then the Blazor hybrid, which we talked about too. Which I believe Dave will be talking a bit about hybrid stuff in his session at 5. Maybe a slide? Yeah, thumbs up. So if you missed Gerald's this morning, you can go back and hopefully watch recording. And then Dave at 5 will talk more about the Maui roadmap um, and what we're doing here. So cool. How does this work with the world of mobile? Um, how my, OK, question. How many of you have iPhones? OK. And then Android, I assume. The, does anyone not have an iPhone or an Android? Anyone have like a mysterious? Anyone still have a Windows phone? OK. Um, so you probably know that you get updates, and your phone screams at you to update until you have done that. And they happen um, generally around the fall every year. We ship .NET also in the fall every year, but a little bit later than those things. And we want to make sure that you can write apps for your customers' devices on the first day that that operating system ships. So what we're going to do is sync up those major uh, .NET MAUI versions with .NET, and then sync up the external dependency support with that .NET release. But you can pull it in earlier um, once we have it out. Usually within a couple weeks of the first beta, we'll have that beta, depending on how crazy it is. And then within a day or two of the actual release, we'll have that. So you can pull that in early. But if you don't mind waiting a month or two, .NET 8, .NET 9, .NET 10, .NET 100 will have everything you need right there in it. And Maui is an optional workload. So if you're a .NET developer who doesn't want to touch any of the mobile stuff, you don't have to. We're not going to install Android on your device. I promise. Whoa. What? What just happened? I'm getting spoiled. No. OK. That was, what did I do? All right. Um, like I said, Xamarin is going to receive support until May 2024. Currently, you're locked to the Xcode and Android versions that are out um, as of a couple months ago. We're discussing whether to make that a little bit more flexible, but it's a decision that we're going to make after .NET 8 ships. So keep giving us our feedback, your feedback, if that's something that you feel really passionate about. All right. So a lot of uh, questions are immediately like, how do I upgrade my app right now? Should I just do it today? You totally can. Go ahead. We've done it all. Um, but one thing that we've learned has helped folks a lot is if you actually prepare to upgrade a little bit, you know, it's, I guess it's not the summer anymore, but if you have a summer intern or whatever, give them some easy tasks to go in, learn a little bit about Maui and what has changed. Um, and it will make your life a lot easier when you go to upgrade. The first one is just getting up to date. So we have a couple sample apps we've shipped at conferences um, that show back end, blah, 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 blah. And then we never update them, right? So we go to migrate these sample apps. For example, the one that I'm going to show is called Tailwind Traders. I think it was Xamarin Forms 4. And it's like 
years behind already what the last version of Xamarin Forms was. So get up to Xamarin Forms. 4.8 is the minimum, but preferably 5. And then make sure your app builds and runs and doesn't like crash all over the place. You don't have to worry about what it looks like. It might look weird, but you're going to fix that with Maui anyways. Um, but get it up to date with Xamarin. If there are things that we deprecated in Xamarin, chances are they're also deprecated in Maui. So do that. Um, data pages and theme nougats were the big things that we saw people not really getting rid of and hanging on, even though they were deprecated in Xamarin. And then one of the awesome things about Maui is that we added a lot of just like controls and properties in general. So you might have written something like a custom renderer, which is the way to target the native platforms with custom UI that we don't have for you in Xamarin Forms. You might have written those things and not actually need them anymore. You can just delete the file, delete the interface for it in your Xamarin app, and then just use it straight up in the Maui code. So that is a really good thing to do. Go check out what you can get rid of. Um, the next thing, and probably the most important thing, is going to be inventorying like what you actually depend on. This was way worse a year ago. You have it much better now, because most of the nougats are up to date that people need. But uh, my recommendation is just literally make a list of everything that your app has. Make sure they're actively maintained. We had a customer um, who I won't name drop, but they came to us a couple months ago, and they were like, we're using this communication library that Cisco built in 2007. Why is there no Maui support? And I was like, has Cisco touched it since 2007? And they were like, no. And I was like, so why, why, <laughs> why would they give you Maui support? I don't know. Um, so make sure that the nougats you're using are actively maintained. If there's really no other option, fine. But that's just my advice, my opinion. Um, see if they're already compatible with Maui. Some libraries don't have to do anything, particularly like the non-UI ones. It's all .NET, so it doesn't matter. The way you can do that, Dave showed me this. This is an amazing trick. You can go onto the NuGet website and search in whatever package you have, and it shows you what platforms it targets. Oh, my laser's dead. Oh, I should have changed this battery. OK, uh, the arrows are there. But sometimes some don't target some of the target platforms. Like sometimes they don't target Windows for whatever reason. So make sure that everything that you need in your app is there and supported. Um, if not, you can always build something from source and try and get it to work. Or, you know, there's usually Maui compatible versions of packages that uh, someone in the community has made, packages that aren't being brought over. Uh, one of the engineers on our team brought over some of the popular ones, like FF image loading, a lot of people use. And so he made that Maui compat. Um, there's also the Maui Community Toolkit, which Daryl helps maintain. And they have a lot of UI things that we didn't put in Maui, but that people had been using as like third-party packages that we kind of lifted and put into that. And so it is open source. It's maintained by the community, but we keep our eye on it very heavily. And, um, you know, it is in the Microsoft GitHub. So if that means something to you, that's, that's good. And then worst case, like, you can fork a library. You can bind things natively. You can take a native iOS Swift library and bind it, or Objective-C library and bind it. It's not fun, but you can do it. We have not heard in the past couple months any customer that has not been able to find a replacement for their packages. So it's a pretty good sign right now. Um, things like Prism, which is a navigation and MVVM helper library, that's almost done with their Maui port. Like the, the major ones are all there, so you'll be good. <laughs> This is an example from um, David upgraded a different one of our sample apps, and he had literally in the, the wiki he was writing out like of his brain dump as he did it, just the nougat. Is it compatible? What's the alternative? And I think everyone should do this. Um, when customers do this and can come to us with this list and say, these are the ones, we can say, oh, there is an alternative for that one. That's there. Or, oh, that's a good thing. We haven't thought of that. Let me go see what else people use there, what other things we know of. So this is a good little organization strategy. Um, and then finally, with Maui, you have the option to do a single project. With Xamarin, you have these things called head projects. So you'd have your mobile .NET standard app, and then you'd have the Android project, and then you'd have the iOS project, and then maybe you have the Windows project. Um, pop those open and see what's in there and if you wrote any native code, if you were the person who wrote the code, you probably know it's there. But if this is an app you're not as familiar with or a code base, um, it's worth taking a peek. 
a lot of these services, like in this slide, the gallery, the platform service, they, if they don't have UI, they probably don't have to change in terms of like what they actually do. But you want to inventory just what renders you're using, your custom renders, um, if you're doing any effect type things. Again, a lot of times these things you can just get rid of, but they're also relatively easy to move over to Maui um, and re-architect or rewrite in the new handler architecture that's a lot more flexible or just use the compatibility. We're calling them the render shims. You, you shim them. Um, so there's a lot of options there, but again, like make that list. These are all the things I have in my native project that I'm going to have to probably deal with. What am I going to do about these? Okay, cool. So there, you have your lists. You feel all organized. And then you open your computer, and you just right-click upgrade, and it's done. I'm just kidding. It's not that easy. It's almost that easy. It's getting better. Um, putting this talk together, I gave the same talk this time last year at Dev Intersections, and it was so much worse. So we have made a lot of progress in a year, so I'm happy about that. Um, click. Cool. There are a, a good chunk of tasks that have to be happened, that have to happen for your code to run again once you get up to Maui. Um, the most important one is actually moving the project files into the new project system, the SDK style projects, which is just like your CS proj. We'll look at them in a second and I'll explain what that means. Um, and then there's a new entry point that's the same as .NET. You have an app builder, you have Maui program.cs, and you can just start it from there. We got rid of the things that say Xamarin Forms, and they're now Microsoft.Maui, right? So that's a namespace change you have to go. That's a, that's a major find and replace. Um, there are some API changes, like we changed color to colors or vice versa, and I always get it mixed up, but whatever. The tool does it for me. And then, of course, like updating those NuGet packages to the compatible ones, compiling it and building it, and then you're going to get some build errors, and then you're going to want to recompile, blah, blah, blah. And then opening it up, um, we changed some default properties with Maui UI controls. They're in the docs if you're interested. But really, it's in some places in Xamarin, we had like margin by default is four. Like, why did we do that? We thought that was smart. It was a terrible idea. People would be like, why is there a margin? And they'd overwrite it with zero. We zeroed those things out in Maui. But if you were relying on that like default four, your UI is going to go. So you're going to run your app, and you're going to be like, oh, that's interesting, and just have to touch it up a little bit. These first five steps, we help you with a lot. Not 100% of the way, but a lot, using something called the .NET Upgrade Assistant. Um, it is a step-by-step, -step, like you click through it in Visual Studio extension that helps you upgrade. It will replace those namespaces. It does the API changes, um, or at least as many as we can reasonably do without breaking your code. Um, and it will help update known dependencies. So it will take out Xamarin Forms and replace it with Maui. It will take out like the apps in our package and replace it with whatever the compatible ones are, blah, blah, blah. Um, it works with Xamarin Forms to Maui. It also works with .NET 7 to .NET 8. So if you have a .NET 7 Maui app, you can just use the Upgrade Assistant to do the, up the .NET 8 transform, which is much simpler, obviously, than Xamarin. Like moving from between .NETs is generally not crazy. Um, another thing that's cool about this that I was talking to the progress folks about uh, is that you can actually extend this extension with your own code transformers. So for example, if you're using progress controls, um, they can write their own transformers to plug into Upgrade Assistant to help do their Xamarin Forms to Maui migration as part of your project, which is pretty cool. So the best way to use this is in Visual Studio as the extension, which we'll look at. Um, you can also do it on the command line. The command line has a little bit less functionality, but if you want to do something on a Mac or a Linux or a build machine, that's, that's the way to do it. So there are a bunch of different strategies. I'm going to show you one of them um, for the, the way to actually upgrade your app. It is up to you. You know your code base. You know how complicated it's going to be. You know how comfortable you are with it um, and what you think is going to be the best idea for you and your, your build system and whatever it is. The one that we see a lot of people do, you just upgrade the projects in place. You go into the, the forms class library. You upgrade that. You do the next, the Android library, you upgrade that. You can do that. Um, you can create a new project, a multi-headed Maui project, so it looks just like the Xamarin Forms one. But you can take your code and just upgrade into it. That's sometimes a little bit cleaner, because you don't have a lot of the straggling stuff that you have from Xamarin that you don't need anymore. 
Um, you can create a new single project, which is the newer Maui architecture where you don't have the multi-headed situation. You can copy paste things into that, copy paste things into your platform folder and upgrade it that way. You can do it all manually, which so be it if that's what you want. Um, one thing that a lot of people have, I've started seeing, Dave was the one who I think suggested this first, was creating a sandbox. So if you want to be like, how does this control work in Maui versus Xamarin, you just pop it in your blank app and you have that on the side and that's always nice to have. Um, and then, of course, you need to just build, read the errors, fix those errors, and that will help you um, delve into a lot of the issues that you're having. So let's look at it all. And I'm doing great on time. I'm amazing, right? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. This is Tailwind Traders. It is a sample app. It's on GitHub somewhere if you Google it. And it is a Xamarin Forms app. And it has just Android and iOS, so we're not talking about Windows today, but oh well. And it's not super complicated, but it has a lot of just stuff going on. All of the pages are in this features tab here. So you can see like, there's quite a few different things. The, the idea with this app is that um, you can take a picture of like a hammer and it will pop up in a shopping website. Like this is where you can buy this hammer. HomeDepot.com or whatever, whatever it would be. Um, so there's some camera stuff. There's some interesting UI pieces. We're not going to try and run it because I am terrified of running Android on this particular laptop because I just had to reformat it a couple days ago. But um, yeah, it's a pretty cool app. You can look at the demos of it. We showed it at a Visual that the Visual Studio 2022 launch. No, I lied. The Visual Studio 2019 launch, we demoed this app. So you can go look at it there. Um, but it's got the, the Xamarin Forms class library and then the Android and the iOS project heads. And this is what the Xamarin Forms project file looks like right now. This is the new, what we call SDK style project, but it's net standard targeting. Um, let me zoom this in, sorry. Doop, 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 doop. Let me move this down. Unpin you, okay. Um, yeah, so it's, it's kind of messy, but it's there. We have the embedded resource generator stuff, whatever. Um, the Android and iOS apps have a different project file. Zoom. Oh my goodness. Zoom. Oh, why do you do this to me, VS Code? Um, these project files are heinous. <laughs> They're just XML encoded files. This is how you know that it's a Xamarin Android project, this GUID. That means Xamarin Android. How would you know that? That's a great question. I, do, I don't know. Someone told me that once, and I thought that was the craziest thing ever. But this is, um, let's see, let's keep going here. 288 lines for this project file. Uh, it's got all these resources and plugins and whatever. So when you go into Visual Studio, what you're going to have to do is upgrade each of these projects one by one. Um, the, the class library becomes the main Maui project, and then the Android project becomes like a new .NET Android project that you can run. Seems kind of complicated. It's not that bad. Um, the extension, I'm actually going to show you something cool, except it's kind of buggy. We have this new extension manager. It's just a tab in Visual Studio now instead of the pop-up. That was horrible. But just search .NET Upgrade Assistant and download it. And that's it. Once you've downloaded it, you have to restart Visual Studio. Um, when you click on a project, like this mobile project, you get this option here that says upgrade. That's it. Um, so we'll click that. Do, 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 do. All right. This is so zoomed out. All right, I'll just read it to you as we go. Um, anyways, so you, this is where you make your first decision if you're going to do everything in place or side by side. We are going to do side by side today. Um, so that's the second option. And I already have created a project that is a multi-headed Maui app. There's a template you can grab. It's going to ship as part of the upgrade assistant like very soon. It's just not today. So I had to make the project separately. Otherwise, you could do new. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that project to my solution. So I'm going to add my existing project, and that should be in source, Tailwind Maui. And this is the 
this is the new template that it created for me. Um, it created the head projects. It gave me Mac and WinUI, even though I don't actually need those for this app, but I have them. Um, and then I just click on this, give it my project file. And now that is now part of the solution, so I can upgrade into it. So existing project, next. Pick, where'd it go? Hello, Tailwind Maui. Existing project, there we go. Click on that, hit next. Um, pick the .NET I'm going to. I'm going to go to .NET 8 because I'm cool and fun. I'm going to select all the components I want to upgrade, which I'm just going to click all of them. And then it is going to go, it, go through and do it step by step by step for me. So it'll show you errors. Like this one was just about the target framework stuff, which is actually not a big deal because that's the project file has it for me now with the template. But it goes through all these packages, makes sure that those are good. It goes through all my files and checks them all. Um, updates the namespaces, updates all that stuff. It goes on forever. It takes a few minutes. Apparently, I have 167 items in this project. Um, and because this is a class library, once this is done, which it is, I can just build this project. I'm not going to be able to run it yet because I don't have any of my target platform projects set up yet. But I can just build this and start to see where my errors are. So, um, oh, so this must be the problem. For some reason, it doesn't nest my XAML files when I do the upgrade into it. But when I close and reopen the IDE, it does. I don't know why. This is a bug. I'm going to file it. Um, so looking in here, it added a couple things in that MAUI template. One is this MAUI program extension file. In a regular MAUI app, a single project, you just have the MAUI program file. But this one is actually telling you to use a shared like multi-project MAUI app, which is why it's not going to build. I don't have the projects for it to use yet. If this was a regular single project app, this would, could run right now. Um, and it also added the, the shell, which is how we do navigation and kind of like your overview hierarchy of your app. So if you click on here, um, no, it's all I have right now is a home page, and it's going to main page. I will have to change that at some point because my main page is just blank. The home page of this app is actually home page, but that's just something I have to edit and add that namespace back in. Um, so I'm going to build it. And we're going to see what errors it has, and we're going to start hacking away at these. God, I'm sorry my font is so small. I th it looks terrible. All right. So I have some errors. I have only five, which is great, except as many of you know, you fix one error and like 40 more pop up. So this initial number is not necessarily the truth. But let's start on um, the type view is an assembly that's not blah, 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 whatever this means. Okay. This is using a carousel view plugin that you used in Xamarin Forms if you want a carousel view, which is the view that when you're like online shopping, you swipe between all the different pictures of the items left and right. That's what a carousel view is. Good news about this, you do not need this because we have it built into Maui. So what I do, believe it or not, is I go and I search carousel view in the Maui documentation. And I click on it. This is expert engineering. This is what I get paid to do. Um, and I look at all of the different properties they have for me. So I think what this one is doing, yeah, this is making it a fixed ratio with the width of all the different platforms. It wants to keep it, all the different pictures, it keeps it the same size. So I'm just going to go in a layout and look and say, like, okay, partially visible adjacent items. I am, yeah, this probably has exactly what I need in it, right? So I can literally just get rid of this special control here, um, comment it out. And then I don't know if my XAML um, search is going to work because of this weird not nesting of the XAML pages. So I'm going to cheat. I know it's in home page. I can literally take this out because it's the only control in here. I can take out the carousel view namespace. Um, and then I'll scroll down to it. Do, 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 do. Right here. Um, and just literally, watch this. Watch, get rid of all this. Carousel view. Now. Interpage spacing, not a real thing in Carousel View anymore. So I need to do something kind of fancy with um, an item layout to make that work. So that is, oh my goodness, why is it indenting like this? Okay, let's see if I can do this from memory. Carousel View, it's not item template, it's item layout. Mm, maybe it is item template. 
Don't don't spoil it. Items layout. I got it. Items layout. And then just a linear <laughs> items layout. Um, let's make it a, hor a horizontal carousel view. And the spacing was this static resource here. So I'll just pull this in. And now all my squigglies are going to go away for that. There's another carousel view. I'm not going to make you watch me do the same thing again. But oh, I need to close my tag. This is not how I usually write my XAML. I'm usually very neat about indenting things. But for the sake of brevity, I'm not worrying about it right now. Um, and yeah, so this is literally, I just deleted basically a file, added one or two lines of XAML, um, and I got rid of a custom render. Awesome. Done. This is why we love Maui. I don't have to work around this anymore. Um, so there are a whole bunch of other examples of this. There's also the example of, no, I have to use two fingers. Hold on. Um, OK, so if we look in the head projects, for example, the Android project, actually, let's look in the iOS project first. Uh, we have these effects. I have a multi-line button effect in here. And so with, and with iOS, you can't wrap text in a button. It just literally runs off the screen if you make the button a certain size. So what we did in Tailwind was we created this particular button effect specifically for the iOS app. You know what line endings I want. Um, it's a platform effect. And we literally just did UI button, title label, line break mode, line break mode, word wrap. Like, we had to write this natively in iOS to get the words to wrap around in a button. We didn't have to do this in Android, because Android, for some reason, let us do it without too much issue. Um, but then we had to make the interface for it up here. So we have the multi-line button effect, which is literally just saying, there is this effect, please use it. And then in the home page on our button up here, we had to use, we had to create the button and then do the button effects multi-line button. This we can literally get rid of. And I will do my fancy engineering here and search button. And we will do mm, probably not visual states. Where's properties of it? It was probably right at the very top, and I scrolled right past it. Ah, yes, it was right at the top. Line break mode. That's it. So I just go line. Oh, my button. Hold on. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, XAML. Now I have the same thing, word wrap. So again, I just got rid of two files for one line of XAML by just migrating to Maui and following build errors. So not too bad. Um, and then in the Android project, we have a camera view. I believe it is under features, scanning. So the idea with this is like when you open the camera, it's not using your phone camera. We made a special previewer for it, right? So it's this camera preview renderer, and it uses all this stuff, and it's a lot. And so I was like, I'm pretty sure we don't have a camera view in Maui, but there's got to be something that someone built that's easier than this. So I Googled uh, Maui camera preview, and my good friend Gerald's face popped up. <laughs> YouTube celebrity Gerald. And literally, this is a video of him just plugging in. It's, it's a 14-minute video that he demos, taking a camera view from this package, plugging it into your app, and using it. So that, to me, I would probably prefer than writing all of this custom render or stuff. Um, if you want to keep this, if you're doing state, like native stuff, you can do it. We have very good docs about um, migrating up here. You go to the top, migrate from Xamarin. Xamarin Forms projects, reuse and migrating custom renders. So we have information for you to follow here. You can go through this. You know your custom renders better than we do because you wrote them. So trust yourself. But again, this is just another another example of things that like I'm mostly just plugging through, finding build errors, deleting code that I don't need, figuring out what code I do need. Um, had I inventoried these before, I probably could have known that without having to poke through the projects, which is why I suggest doing that. Um, and then pretty much that's it. You keep building until it works, and then what you'll do, do the same thing with the Android project, right? So you right-click, 
upgrade. Um, oh, I forgot about this. And then you can literally just like move it into a newer .NET version, side-by-side -side upgrade to the Maui Android project that was created for you, and you just go and you do the same thing. The head projects are a lot easier than the Maui project itself because most of that code is like totally untouched. They don't even have Xamarin Forms namespaces in them in most places, so that's very good. Um, there's a couple things like you want to watch out for. One thing is always the uh, app entry points in here. So the way that we do it here, main application, um, how this is started, or sorry, main activity, how we start this changed a little, which is why it's nicer to migrate into a new project, because you don't have to actually migrate this file. It just uses the new file, which works. So you might have to go add some things back, but for the most part, you're going to be OK. Follow the prompts, follow the build errors. It's kind of like whack-a-mole, like just, then, then it works. Um, did I want to show anything else in the code while I was here? I don't think so. Yeah, very cool. Oh, and in the Maui sample app, we give you the resources folder. So if you want to start moving over like your images and fonts by default, you can. So you can literally just go into the Android app, open your resources. These are all the folders I was talking about. Open this one, take these images, literally pop these images right into the Maui resource folder, and now they'll work anywhere um, in both Android and iOS without having to do that. So, okay. Back to the slides for just a couple minutes. 2.17. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Coming soon to Upgrade Assistant. So what I just showed you was that multi-platform project template. Um, we are going to put that in Upgrade Assistant so you can upgrade into a new version, not have to make it on the command line, like I said. But you can also go and pull it off of one of our engineers' uh, GitHubs right now if you'd like to. The other thing we've heard a lot that we had not actually originally done and are doing now is the Xamarin Forms UWP project to a Maui WinUI project. Originally, this tool only worked for Android and iOS, which kind of made sense because UWP and WinUI are completely different platforms. But whatever. Um, we are always adding more transformers, so let us know what's missing that is kind of repeatable for most Maui projects. And again, you can always extend it with your own if that's something you want. Um, and then we have something that uh, like may or may not be in the next preview. We're not really sure. It's pretty cool. One of our engineers just popped up one day and was like, look what I did. And if you have a Maui app with a Xamarin property or a Xamarin namespace in it, it's just a light bulb. And it's like, sorry, this doesn't work anymore. Switch it to this. And we were like, oh. That's very nice. Thank you, Marco. Um, so that'll be coming up soon. Yeah, <laughs> right? Like, that's always how it works. So um, other things that you kind of have to change when you upgrade to Maui, one of those things is Visual Studio for Mac. So VS for Mac is being retired. That means that we are no longer going to support it as of next August. Um, you will still always be able to download it. We're going to keep it downloadable, but we're not going to be updating it with like the latest Xcodes and .NET support and all of that stuff. Um, we're replacing it with a VS Code extension, which for all intents and purposes, I think in the long run is going to be great. If you're a big VS Mac user now, it's probably going to be a bit of an adjustment. So check it out and start sending me your feedback on the VS Code extension because we can ship updates to that all the time, um, much quicker than we can Visual Studio. So let me know. Let me know what you think. If you're like, I'm going to die without VS for Mac, also let me know that. I'll pass it along to people. I don't think anything will change, but I will let them know. Um, we, you can also use the command line for the upgrading uh, if you want to do it on a Mac. My preference is just boot up Parallels with a Windows VM and use the Upgrade Assistant in Visual Studio. The command line has like most of the stuff, but not all of it. It doesn't get the updates as quickly. So just my opinion. If you want to use the command line, that's fine. Uh, the other thing is App Center. So App Center doesn't really have support for Maui. If you're using it with your Xamarin app, um, most of the stuff will mostly work once you migrate, but it's not like they're putting any effort into making new Maui versions of things. So our recommendation, you don't have to actually follow these things, but what we are recommending to our customers is use Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions for builds. Um, use test flight and Google Play Beta for distribution, or if you have like Intune or a company store or company portal, you can use those things. Um, we've been suggesting just moving to App Insights for analytics, which people use for like usage and blah, blah, blah. Crash reporting, um, we're looking at like who we can partner with on the Azure side to handle that really well. And then testing, 
You can continue to use Xamarin UI test. It works. If there's, this app has UI tests in it, hypothetically, I could have migrated those. What we're doing on the Maui team is we're starting to move over to Appium. We just think it's better suited for our needs now. UI test did not support Mac at all. It was kind of a little old and unloved for a while. And so instead of us trying to take the work to like resurrect it, we have just decided to go with something that almost everybody everywhere uses, which is Appium for native uh, devices. So that is our advice there. What if you need help and you're panicking and you're like, oh my goodness, what do I do? I'm freaking out. First of all, look at the docs. We add more all the time. There are, every time I open the docs to look for something, there's new stuff. So, and I open the docs all the time. Um, this is very helpful. There are all different scenarios we cover here, including like multi-project, single project, manual, Xamarin native, um, blah, blah, blah. If you have like an Android Wear or, or a tvOS or a watchOS extension, those things pretty much follow the native upgrades. Lots of options. Um, we also have, <laughs> use sparingly, I'm giving this to you because I like you all, uh, the Maui hotline, which is not really a hotline because we have no like need or mandate to respond to it. Literally, Dave and I made a mailing list and stuck a bunch of engineers on it and we're like, that's the Maui hotline. So people will get back to you. It's actually quite active. We've had really good participation in it. Um, a lot of the engineers are actually very happy to have direct people coming to them saying, this is the issue I'm having with my upgrade. Like, please help right now. And they do get involved. Um, but just if, a heads up, if you don't hear back, like immediately, that's because you have me and Dave and our engineering teams are the people that are monitoring this email. Um, generally, when you email us here, Make sure you've checked the docs. Make sure that you like have a pretty good idea of what's going on. You can also always reach out and be like, hey, like I have this package. I don't know what the good replacement would be. Um, here's my list of NuGets. These are all my sane replacements. I'm missing these two. Like, what are your thoughts? We can, we can work on that. Usually, these things get pretty niche, though, because everyone's app is so different. Um, once you've kind of exhausted the internet, this is where you're going to want to go. So Maui-upgrades at Microsoft.com is how you get there. Again, if we don't respond immediately, sorry. It's OK. You're not going to die. Um, or you might. I don't know. Um, also, I put the link up here to David's like brain dump of Smart Hotel 360 when he was migrating it. I'm probably going to do something similar for Tailwind Traders, except that app is in way worse shape. So I might not actually succeed with that one. But we'll see. Um, yeah. OK. I think that's it. And I think that means I actually have 10 minutes for questions, if there are any, which is great. Yes. So good. Um, again, come see Dave's talk at 5.10 and watch Gerald's recording. Dave will talk about your roadmap. Gerald did uh, Blazor and Signal R. Not Blazor. He did Signal R and stuff. I don't know. You got to tell him he was cool or not on your phone. That was pretty much, that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, and then, yeah, we have a ton of sessions at .NET Conf. If you don't know how to look at .NET Conf, Agenda, it is literally .netconf.net slash agenda, I think. I'm like 99%. Yeah, I'm great. I'm so good. Um, we'll have a, a little bit of Maui in the keynote, and then a full first day of stuff from the team. We have a performance talk. We have a C Sharp dev kit talk if you want to learn more about the C Sharp extension and VS Code. Um, we have the what's new with Maui session, which will be fun. And then the next two days are more things, both from the team and from community members. If you are someone who likes to give talks, .netconf is a really great place to do that like remotely. So submit for next year. Um, there's a lot of things. And we go all through the night, and it's pretty much fully remote. So if you're in a different time zone from Redmond, such as 10 hours behind, ahead, wherever we are, um, there will be things up when you're awake and eating or whatever that you can watch and tune into that are live and then you can always watch the recordings. So um, what is this? I haven't seen this one yet. <laughs> EF core in Maui. I'm going to have to stay up late for that one. That sucks. OK. Um, reactive programming with Maui. There's a lot of Maui stuff. I haven't looked at this in a couple days. Very exciting. OK. Uh, that's that. This is my final slide. Um, any questions? Do we have the box to throw? 
Uh, apparently, the box has interference with phone devices, so I am your new box. That's hilarious. Try and throw me. We had like a little phone box you could throw at people, and then we had a microphone. I was so in excited it. for it too. It was gonna be. But interference is bad. It was very, gonna be a very so. interactive Q and A. Cool. Thanks, Alyssa. Hey, uh, we have a big fat uh, Windows WPF uh, application, and we're thinking to migrating it to a modern tech stack. Can we and should we migrate it to Maui? Yeah, great question. So yes and yes, but the can we is um, not as simple as the upgrade assistant. There are, yeah, <laughs> giggle, giggle, I know. There are a bunch of strategies for WPF upgrades. Um, one thing that we've seen a lot of people do is move some of their WPF UI into Blazor components and then move those over one by one into a Maui app because that's a lot easier. So you kind of get the modernization into the Razor syntax from WPF if that's what you want. And then you can prove that all those things still work in WPF and then kind of move them either one by one or all at once into Maui. The Blazor hybrid story is really flexible. So that's an option. Um, another thing, we are looking at like AI-based WPF to Maui transformers. That's something we think something like Copilot could really help with because something like the Upgrade Assistant is not going to do a great job at it. Um, for the most part, the XAML concepts are the same, but some of the syntax is different. How you do data bindings a little bit different. So we think that that's something that Copilot might be able to help with. We haven't proved that yet, but we've we've experimented with it. So um, keep an ear out for that. And as far as should you, we think yes. Um, the nice thing about Maui is we are going to react to what whatever Windows decides. We are not the Windows team, unfortunately. We don't have control over what they decide. So if Windows decides to go to WinUI 4 or WPF2 or whatever it is, like Maui has to react to that for you. You don't have to go and rewrite your app on like the Windows flavor that they are, they are moving forward with. So it might not be immediate if we have to like rewrite our entire Windows backend, but we'll move to those things that make sense that are the Windows preferred development choice and experience. Um, and then a lot of, there is there is like community support for WPF Maui apps. Um, right now, since it's WinUI, you're gonna probably end up wanting to ship it as like a packaged app, so that's a little bit different of a deployment. But you can do unpackaged WinUI if you want, it's just an extra step. So lots of options, but it is a really good um, modernization path, especially if you want to get to Mac or to mobile with your WPF app. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I guess the same applies for WinForms. I was even yeah. afraid to ask for it. <laughs> yeah, same same question, same answer. Uh, WinForms also has the Blazor web view now, so you can do that same thing where like you piecemeal your web form or WinForms into Blazor and shove it into Maui as you go. Thanks for joining. <laughs>